This podcast discusses cannabis and is intended for audiences 21 and over. I will admit that this has been a very stressful year and I have probably consumed a lot more cannabis this year than I have in my whole entire life. Just going to admit that. And it's because of the climate. It's because of the stress, the, the election, the pandemic. You know, we have George Floyd was murdered. You know, we have all these things, Breonna Taylor. And these are things that are popping up over and over and over. And how do you cope? You know, I turn to cannabis. Happy New Year, and welcome back to How to Do the Pod, brought to you by The High Guide. I'm April Pride. So what is the pot talk? Well, when cannabis was declared an essential service during the lockdowns for COVID-19 in March of 2020, the national conversation around the plant shifted from stigma to solving real problems related to stress, sleep, and mental health. If you're one of the many women who has found relief with cannabis, we're here to help. Because what does come next after cannabis has been deemed essential medicine for millions of Americans? We'll share stories about these top of mind topics. A friend who just needs to do the pot already, your favorite boomer who has prescribed too many pills, a teenager who has too little school and no sports, a sober partner who is off the weed for work or to work the steps. And how to talk to someone <clears throat> asking for a friend you think smokes too much weed, which is the topic of today's episode. You just heard from Shanitria Anthony, a journalist and host of Blunt Flow and Mama podcast. Shanitria is far from alone in coping through 2020 with weed, and alcohol consumption was up nearly 50% too. It's been a long haul, but how do you know if a lot is too much? If you're concerned about someone you love or your own behavior around weed, we offer this episode to guide your next move with informed compassion. Today, we're exploring the very loaded topic of too much. The global pandemic forced society to recognize the integral, essential no less, role cannabis plays in the daily lives of millions of Americans. But just like pharmaceuticals can be consumed beyond what's necessary to heal, so too can weed. A few stats for you. 35% of those who report consuming weed in the last month are daily consumers. One third of today's daily pot smokers, quote, smokers, Meet the criteria for cannabis use disorder, which is defined as the continued use of cannabis despite clinically significant impairment. We also know that people who begin using marijuana before the age of 18 are four to seven times more likely to develop a marijuana use disorder than adults. Data shows that 9% of cannabis consumers become addicted, which is less than the rate for alcoholism, which is 16% of people becoming addicted, but still significant. The Bible for Mental Disorders, the DSM-5, lists 11 symptoms for cannabis use disorder, and the number of symptoms correspond to the severity of the disorder. So take the many possible symptoms, then add a lack of cannabis education, research, and medical oversight, like many things with weed, simple answers, they're hard to find. We're not doctors, we're not dispensing medical advice here at How to Do the Pot, and we encourage you to reach out to a medical professional if you may be struggling with any addiction. Since it's our job to think about weed and its effect on women, we see our role as providing you with the information that we have access to, the advice of experts, and real women who can help dig into the complexity and the wide range of experiences that make up modern cannabis. We asked Dr. Jessica Knox, our favorite cannabis doctor, a Harvard-trained physician, and co-founder of the American Cannabinoid Clinics, the most important questions to think about if you're concerned about overconsumption. Cannabis is a medicine at its root, and certainly that medicine can be used in a recreational way, but I believe it should always be used in a way that enhances or makes you feel better, improves your quality of life. And if it's not doing that for you, if it's doing the opposite, then I think that's a good indicator that maybe you're overdoing it. There are some folks who need hundreds or even thousands of milligrams a day for what they're trying to manage and others who only need 10 milligrams a day. So it is very personalized. But when thinking about is somebody using too much, I think there are probably two, I don't want to say metrics because it's not that like hard and fast, but <laughs> but two concerns that come to mind. One is there is a phenomenon when using cannabis known as the biphasic effect, where it's not linear in that if I feel okay with this low amount of cannabis, or I feel good with this moderate amount of cannabis, I'm going to feel amazing with this higher amount of cannabis. 
what we see is it's more shaped like a bell curve where there's like a sweet spot in the middle of whatever and moderate, again, that's relative. My moderate dose might be much lower or much higher than your moderate dose. But that moderate dose is where I'm going to feel the best effects. If I increase over that dose, I start to get either side effects or I get a return of the symptoms that I had seen go away with that lower dose. So that's one measure of am I using too much where, you know, I used to feel pretty good on 20 milligrams. So I went up to 30 milligrams and now I feel really crummy. You probably should dial it back down. And that might be an easy way for someone to know if they're using too much. I think another measure that I like to use, and that is probably more aligned with sort of the dependency, withdrawal, addiction sort of, I guess, scale out in the general world is, is your cannabis use disrupting your normal way of life and your normal daily life? Is your use of cannabis making you not show up for work or not show up for school? Or is it causing you to withdraw from your friends or family because you're more interested in using your cannabis than connecting? Sandra Gwines, aka The Kush Nurse, is an RN with over 15 years of experience. She helps set expectations with her patients so they understand what it means to medicate with cannabis. People think that cannabis is going to be like this magic thing and you're going to have it and then that's it, you're good to go. So they have an idea that if you're smoking or consuming cannabis more than once a day, now you're like an addict. But it's not because when you think about it, the window of your medication really lies in the method that you use. So you know that if you need to work for eight hours, you're going to need to figure out What am I going to have to take that's going to let me work for eight hours? Okay, I can smoke every two to three hours or I can have an edible that's going to last me six hours or I can have, you know, a combination of these things to get me to that eight hour mark, you know, a patch and an edible or whatever it is. So I think that's one thing that we really need to educate more on. Because a lot of people think you're going to take this oil in the morning. It's just going to magic in your body, you know? And I'm like, no, I'm like, you probably are going to take it two to three times a day. You may have to try a different method for different things. You ask me how many times a day and all that. You're going to use cannabis almost as many times a day as you would use your regular pharmaceutical medication. As more women consider medical cannabis, we're figuring out in real time what that looks like in real life. Shanitria shares how she thinks about consumption. Some people require more because of what they're going through physically. Like when you're in pain, you might need more than if you're just recreationally. And when I say recreational, I mean like, you know, just smoking a joint and watching Netflix. It's not the same thing as someone who's dealing with lupus or who has endometriosis or someone who has, you know, these things that like cannabis literally helps them to be well and healthy enough to show up in life. I realized that like I'm a healthy person. The biggest surgery I had, which is a big surgery, are my the C-sections, the two C-sections I had for my kids. And aside from that, it's just like, but just being conscious of like, am I smoking too much? If you have the thought, am I smoking too much? Maybe you are. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like, it's fine. Like, weed is fun. Sometimes you get caught up, but just be conscious of it. Staying mindful helps Shanitria know her limits. So overconsumption is a concern, right? But the best part about weed, especially if you're a smoker of weed, your body will tell you when you've done it too much. Um, You will not get as high anymore. If you are smoking weed to get a quick high and then go do whatever you have to do. But if you've been smoking so much and then all of a sudden it's like, wow, I used to only have to smoke one joint, like, you know, a gram and I would be fine. Episode 27 of How to Do the Pot breaks down five steps to be more mindful with your weed consumption. We call it practicing the pot. Have you thought about a tolerance break? If microdosing doesn't work for you anymore, then it's a sign that it's time for a tolerance break. It's not for people who don't know a tolerance break is taking. Um, ideally, you want to take like seven days off from cannabis, but it could be a tea break, which is just taking a break from THC. And that is the part that gets you high your tolerance can increase and grow over time to the point where, you know, you've hit that threshold and you can't get high anymore, which is probably an indicator that you need to take a tea break. Dr. Jess has some sobering news for THC lovers. Frankly, most of us don't need 
<laughs> that much THC. You know, we, we typically don't need a lot of THC to treat medical conditions. And that's not to say THC doesn't have medicinal benefits. It does. There, there are definitely conditions where we need THC. But a lot of times for pain, for instance, you don't need to medicate to a point of intoxication to get relief. And recreationally, you know, again, it doesn't have to take that much THC to get a little high if that's what people want. But again, it's all about informed use. Like you don't have to blitz yourself with THC to feel good or feel better. As with much about cannabis, we're still waiting for standardization. But in general, over 20% is considered a high THC level. Shanitria talks about one of the criteria Dr. Jess mentioned, asking whether your cannabis use is disrupting your normal way of life or your normal daily routine, whatever normal may be these days. Anything can be abused. Even cannabis can be abused. People are like, oh, well, wine mom says, well, nothing's wrong with drinking a glass of wine. I think the problem comes in when you drink half the bottle or you drink the whole bottle. And then it's like you're overdoing it. So everything's in moderation. I love cookies. I love ice cream. I like to get the tiny little pint of ice cream, but I don't want to eat the whole pint because my stomach will hurt. You know, your body's going to tell you, uh, oh, you did too much. So you just have to listen to your body. If your body's telling you you're overdoing it. Then it's time for a break. Okay. Maybe I smoked a little bit too much, but I admit, <laughs> you know, I admit it. And I think that it's just really easy to fall into that and it being an escape. And I don't think that cannabis should be an escape. It should be the gateway to you unlocking your feelings, to being able to sit down with yourself and figure out like, why? Why am I doing this? Like, what am I trying to run from? What am I trying to ignore? What what conversations am I trying to avoid? You know, just be honest with yourself. And it's something people don't want to talk about with weed, but it happens. Like, you know, sometimes you just have a little too much. Admit it, check it and keep going. It's life. A personal note. I take, a, I guess you could say, a self-imposed tolerance break every family vacation. I don't travel with weed, which forces a check-in on both my consumption and my behavior with and without weed. For today's High Five, what to consider if you or someone you love is perhaps hitting toward too much. Number one, are you consuming the right dose? Understand what dosage amounts work for you and reach out to a medical professional if you have questions. If you start to get either side effects or a return of the symptoms, be mindful of how much you need to feel better. Number two, if you're a daily consumer, consider a tolerance break to check in with your intention and goals around weed. Number three, you may need less THC than you think to feel better physically or mentally. Remember, cannabis's ability to heal is on a bell curve. More doesn't equal better. Number four, know the warning signs. Is your use of cannabis changing your normal routine? causing you not to show up for work or other responsibilities? Are you withdrawing from your friends or family because you're more interested in using your cannabis than connecting? Number five, cannabis can be addictive and marijuana use disorder affects about 9% of the population. Learn about the symptoms as listed in the DSM-5. The most severe symptoms are associated with dependence and unpleasant withdrawal symptoms lasting up to two weeks. Please ask for help if you need it. SAM HSA's National Helpline 1-800-662-HELP is a good place to start. We hope this pot talk has offered you some ideas for how to talk about or think about whether you're consuming too much weed. Please share this episode and rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. It helps more people find the show. Stay tuned for more in the coming weeks. And if you have the pot talk, we'd love to hear how it goes. Thanks for listening to the Pot Talk from the High Guide, every woman's cannabis handbook. Find us on Instagram at DoThePot, and you can follow me at April Pride. And for lots more information about cannabis and women, visit our website, DoThePot.com. Thanks to my co-founder, Ellen Scanlon, Maddie Fair, our marketing manager, and our producer, Nick Petrie. I'm April Pride, and we'll be back soon with more of How to Do the Pot. <laughs>